Hello, and welcome to another edition of All About Hopkinton, the original HCAM series that exists solely to talk with the people and organizations that help make Hopkinton a great place. Sitting in for Mary Arnott, I'm Jim Cousins. Today, it is my privilege to be chatting with Jean Birchman and Kathleen Dinsmore from the Marathon Quilters Guild, who are here to introduce you to their group and fill us in on their upcoming event. Kathleen and Jean, thanks for coming on the show. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. All right. Now, I know you have a big event coming up, and we're going to talk all about that. But before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about the actual guild and where did it come from? Well, I'll, I can answer that. Um, in 1996, a group of quilters in Hopkinton decided to form a guild. Um, and I, w I think I'm actually the only person who was had who's been in it since that time but so we started in 1996 and we've gone through um, several iterations and periods of growth uh, we started it actually at the cultural arts alliance mm -hmm. um, and we now meet in faith community church which is a wonderful space um, and Kathleen actually put in a tremendous amount of time and effort last year to officially register us as a 501c3 corporation so or organization, whatever is the appropriate term. She knows that better than I do. So we've really grown, um, but we've stayed pretty consistent, 25 to 40 members mm -hmm. over time, primarily from Hopkinton, but also from the surrounding area, Westboro, Holliston, Ashland. So um, let me ask you, Jean, how did you discover quilting? Well, I... Um, that's a <laughs> I've, I've just always loved vintage things and antique things and when I graduated from college my cousin's wife was making a quilt and I just was really taken with it and I thought well you know I could do that and so I tried it and my first quilt was a massive disaster but my parents proudly displayed it on their bed for many years and actually recently returned it to me um, and so so it, it started there but that was more than 30 years ago, so yeah. it's been a long mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Now, how did you learn the, the art of quilting? Um, in the beginning, I had books. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was before the internet, so I mm -hmm. had books. I took a couple of classes, not many. Um, that was part of the reason of forming the guild, having a group of yep. people mm -hmm. um, so that we call, could all learn from each other, which was wonderful. Um, and then now, of course, you can find anything you want yeah. on the internet, on YouTube. There are all kinds of quilting channels, quilting shows, um, you name it. And mm -hmm. lots of classes, lots of guilds. There's the Quilt Museum in Lowell, so there's mm -hmm. no shortage of opportunities to, to learn about quilting. Mm. And Kathleen, how did you discover the world of quilting? I would say when I was a child, my next door neighbor was a home economics teacher who made beautiful quilts. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always admired them. And I sewed from a young age and made my first quilt out of scraps of clothing that I had. And it was pitiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was always intimidated by making a quilt because I thought that the corners had to match. It had to be exactly perfect. Mm -hmm. And um, so I finally decided I wanted to learn how to quilt. So I joined the guild about nine years ago. Okay. Um, figured I would learn from the experts. <laughs> and I quickly realized that quilts have changed a lot from my childhood. That uh, okay. the modern quilts, the corners don't have to match. And in oh. fact, a lot of them, they intentionally don't match them. And mm -hmm. it can really go... Um, in interesting ways. So now when you say they don't match, is that just like the color and the design or is it that they're not square? I, I would say not square. I mean both. Uh -huh. it, it, it depends on what kind of style you're looking for or okay. the look. Now how did you find uh, the Marathon Quilters Guild? I think through the Hopkinton Independent. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I had a little yeah. paragraph. Because that was my next question, Jean, is before the internet, yeah. how do you how did you guys find each other? Well, you know, Kathleen's exactly right. We had a running thing in um, what was that section in the Independent Community, Community Briefs, yeah. uh, it, okay. and it ran in there for years. Sarah mm. Duckett, such a great yeah. supporter of the community, and so that's how we got a lot of people or word of mouth. And mm -hmm. um, we had we have had shows. This is our. 10, 12th show maybe. So we've had shows about every two years and that attracts a lot of attention and we get a lot of new members um, from that. We originally were having our shows in the farmhouse at the Center for the Arts, um, but 
starting with our last show, which was our 20th anniversary show, the barn was open. In fact, we were one of the first events, I believe, that um, that they held in there. And so we've moved into the, the performance center mm. and the space is just incredible. We hang the quilts from the ceiling so they're just suspended and floating in air. It really mm -hmm. m makes everyone's work really shine. It yeah. just, it's a beautiful venue yeah. to show off the quilts. So, so I know how you found quilting. Why do you quilt? I personally quilt because it's very, well, I've always been uh, creative. Mm -hmm. And so um, I love the feel of the fabric. I love the colors, particularly batiks. And I just, uh, I've gone from relying 100% on a pattern uh, to creating my own. So it, it started off, I would make the borders my own and the, the center of the quilt might be from a pattern. Uh -huh. And now it's, uh, this past year I've created a couple of quilts that are completely my own design. So okay. I like how you can make it your own and really anything goes. It's such a yeah. supportive group yeah. and I am inspired every meeting that I go to mm. and learn from more experienced quilters all the time. I mean, it really is an art form. It, I mean, these absolutely. quilts are so beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. And Jean, why do you quilt? Why do I quilt? Number one, I'm always freezing. And so <laughs> I like to have, I'm just always cold. So I like to have quilts up on me and around me all the time. But really, um, a lot of, of the same things that Kathleen said. It's a it's a great creative outlet. I really enjoy doing something with my hands. They're very tactile. Um, and I think it's just good for your brain, working things out. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Like There are millions of patterns, and those are fun to do. But it's just such a good and healthy exercise to to follow your own path and, and create your own design and, you know, make some mistakes and learn yeah. from those. <laughs> uh, they usually are called design opportunity. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and, I, and honestly, I just, it's a great group of people. The community in Hopkinton is wonderful and the larger national and international community is wonderful. It's, you mm. know, I, I just really enjoy being a part of it. It's very mm. inspiring. So how often do you meet? I know you meet at Faith Congregational, uh, Faith Community Church now. How often do you meet? It's every month between September and June. Okay. Once a month, the second Tuesday of the month. And how long is it? Uh, the meetings generally last from about 6.30 uh, for just greeting, and then 7 o'clock the actual meeting starts until about 8.30 or 9, mm -hmm. depending mm -hmm. on whether we have a guest speaker come in or a show or mm -hmm. um, we're doing some sort of technique that one member might demonstrate and then the rest of us try it out. Mm. Do you actually quilt at the meeting? <laughs> Not that often at the meetings. A couple times a year we'll have workshops or we'll have a retreat, and it's a lot. To, of stuff to mm. cart along with you for two hours. So um, we don't typically bring a lot of machines and do a lot of setup for the meetings, mm -hmm. but for the, um, you know, we'll go to the church for an entire day or an entire weekend and, um, and really get a lot done. That's how actually we worked on this raffle quilt. That was, um, this is a group project that is our raffle quilt for our show. Uh -huh. And so we had a workshop um, Gosh, I don't remember, somewhere in the winter. Can, yeah. And so people worked on piecing the interior of this together. And then Kelsey Allman, who is the chair of the raffle quilt, um, put it together. And I think people also made the exterior blocks for the borders. And she just put those on and quilted it. So, um, so, so this, yeah. since we're talking about that, let me ask you a question. So many people worked on this quilt, mm -hmm. right? How do you get it? so that it's so beautifully balanced. Like it's not, oh, it's, there's a lot of blues together or, you know what I mean? There's a lot of like busyness with other plain ones and like mm -hmm. it's beautifully uniform. Well, it's, um, you know, there are so many scraps in here that kind of there's so many that everything works together. But uh -huh. I, so I think really the answer to your question starts with Kelsey has a really good eye for design. And so she started with a vision um, and a lot of these fabrics are fabrics that she and I have from something else that she brought with her and that's what people use. So yep. it wasn't necessarily that people were bringing things from their own stash at home mm -hmm. um, for this one. And then of course this gray um, batik, she and I searched far and wide for just to bring it all together. Um, and so that was sort of what we used to, to put the rest of it together. Um, 
But the other answer to your question is it's also difficult to find a pattern um, that a lot of people can work on together that's going to come out square and flat, mm -hmm. if that's your intention. Mm -hmm. um, and so what was great about this one, not to get too technical, but it, it, it was the type of piecing and design that you sort of make it a little big and trim it down and okay. so you can fit it together. So if everybody doesn't sew exactly the same, every machine isn't the same, every sewer isn't the same, quilter isn't the same. So um, the final construction of it allows for that. Because mm. um, when you see it flat on the plane, I mean, it is square. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just like very, it's like really nice. Well then, yeah. it, Kelsey, um, quilted it so she has a what's called a long arm machine which is you know longer than from me to you uh -huh. um, and so it's a big machine and so it's pretty densely and evenly quilted and that also helps keep it um, flat and squared up but you know we've done a lot of community projects Kathleen and I both worked on the 300th anniversary quilt which is hanging in the um, Historical Society building and everybody should go and see it mm -hmm. they should pay particular attention to the bottom which is a hillscape that <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen <laughs> naively volunteered to do because I didn't want to do it. She asked, how could I help? And I was like, oh, take a crack at this. It's beautiful. Mm. She did a landscape that just shows so much depth and dimension and all the hills of Hopkinton and the lakes and mm -hmm. it's really tremendous. But so that quilt was also a big group mm -hmm. project. And so it takes a lot of planning beforehand to know that you're going to be able to successfully incorporate everybody's work in a product at the end that is the way that you want it to be so right and that quilt's also at the expo right we're going to put it that will be in oh, the good. eastern states exposition yeah. in september yeah okay. my jean did all the designing for that very yeah. impressive with yeah how many that, that took us years we, we worked on that for like three <laughs> yeah. years yeah <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Now, so do people work on their pieces and the, like their segments individually and then bring them together? Or did you work all together on this particular quilt? For this one, I think everybody got together and worked on, this is actually, this star in the center is um, a lot of different pieces. Mm -hmm. um, so people worked on, it was all pieced on a foundation that was on a shape, so you sort of overshoot it and trim it down. Mm -hmm. um, so people worked on that all together and making these exterior blocks as well. Yeah. And then once all those pieces were done, then one person put it all together. Um, and this was the first shot? Like, yes. you didn't put them together and say, oh wait, you know, we've got to like replace one of these. It just, it looks really well put together. Well, I will say Kelsey, again, who volunteered to do this, is really one of the most precise quilters that yeah. we have in our yeah. group. So she's, <laughs> she's the natural choice to put everybody's work together. It really came out yeah. great. Yeah. And um, do you, are there like younger people involved with the guild or is it mostly uh, adults? And is it mostly women? Um, right now, it's entirely women. Mm -hmm. um, we have had some teenagers in the past, um, but not for quite a while. Right now, we don't have any um, any young people. But we will be at our quilt show. We'll be having an interactive um, table with one of the women in our guild is opening up has opened a business in Ho in Holliston where you can go. And you don't really need to have any sewing experience, and you can do a project with your family. So it could be for a wedding or a birthday or whatever, mm -hmm. and she'll teach you how to sew. And so she's setting up a table with a project that I think will be accessible to people of all ages and skill levels, um, just so they can try it out a little bit. Yeah. So it would be great to um, to attract the younger generation before the rest of us age <laughs> out. But. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I'm not, um, I'm not comparing the two, but my wife has a quilt that was made out of a bunch of t-shirts as she was oh, growing yeah. up, and she treasures that thing. Mm -hmm. We can't lean against it when it's like laying on the back <laughs> of the couch or anything like that. And I mean, these things must become like such family favorite heirloom type things. They are. Yeah, well, they are. actually, I, that, I do that a lot. I make memory quilts for people a lot out of t-shirts or baby clothes or, uh, or whatever. And it, it is, there's something so tactile and visual about, you yeah. know, shirts that 
are not going to fit you anymore because you wore it when you were five. Yeah. But you can't part with it, but what are you going to do? Right. Um, so you take right. it out of the box and you put it in a quilt and you see it every day on the back of your couch. Yeah, you know, this is like comfort food. Exactly. Of warmth, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. just warm and snuggly. So other than your meetings, do, you, do members ever get together and quilt together? Or is it mm -hmm. typically that you're solo? Well, Both. during the, yeah, I mean, uh, during the Saturday workshops, we usually yep. have one a month. Oh, and okay. so we might have a guest uh, quilter come in and teach us a new technique. Yep. I know this past year we had uh, Tim Natar come in and she does map quilts. So oh. uh, she had a map of, uh, of Cape Cod. Mm -hmm. and um, showed us different ways of how to put it together. And um, so it's, it's trying to stretch us, I think, as members yeah. um, to um, new techniques or new types of quilts that we never would have thought of. Right. You know, like the T-shirt quilts. Mm -hmm. or, you know, there's so many different things. I think that's why I was so drawn to it. It's yeah. just, it's not your grandmother's quilt, <laughs> basically. It's, it right. has evolved to so many other forms. Right. So you typically have two meetings a month, a Tuesday night meeting and then a Saturday workshop? Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe not every month, but okay. frequently. And we also, just within the group, there are a lot of friend groups and people will get together. And I had somebody over, we made pillows this afternoon mm -hmm. just mm. for fun. Um, or, you know, we're good at shopping trips yeah. <laughs> together. We like to do that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a great, it's a really nice group of women. Yeah. All right, last question, then we're going to move on to... Uh, the activities of the group. Um, do quilts have traditional or standardized shapes or is it anything goes? I mean as far as size and square or rectangle. I, I mean I would say this. now everything goes. Okay. Yeah absolutely. I, I think you know if you're thinking about really vintage or antique quilts then typically you're thinking about square or rectangular quilts. Mm -hmm. um, probably that were meant to go on a bed, probably that were very utilitarian. Um, Have you, are there any quilts that are not square or rectangular? Oh, oh yeah. yes, absolutely. Oh, really? Yep, round quilts. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Or just or weird any. corners, <laughs> it, you know, yeah. inset corners, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. There, there's a whole art quilt movement that mm -hmm. Kathleen is very artistically inclined, and you should pull out your uh, Kona challenge, by the oh. way. Um, so yeah, we do have several mem members of our guild that are very, very artistic. Mm -hmm. So it's not what you would think of as like, like Kathleen said, what your grandmother's quilt. <laughs> right. Um, but you know, this, oh, is, this something is something that Kathleen just came up with. You know. Um, okay. Actually, and this was, oh, yeah. This was based on a challenge that Jean had put uh, to the quilt guild. Yeah. That we were. She had two different sections of material colors. A cool color, which is this group, and then a warm color. And there was a third. Yeah, group well, we had more interest, so we came up right. with a third one on the fly. But so everybody has the exact same fabrics. Yeah. But I started with a yard and I ripped it in half and I handed it to Kathleen. So I have a half a yard of my color, and then she has a quarter yard of my color and passes it. And so we went around in a circle. So depending on. You had from this big to this big, mm -hmm. but everybody had the same, and then the challenge was to make something out of it. So obviously that's not a printed pattern. That's something that she came up with entirely out of her And each brain. of those little swatches of color is something that you cut out, and mm -hmm. you know what right. that reminds me so much of? Of painting. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like you're painting with fabric there. I think if you come to our show, yeah. which is September 15th and 16th, yeah. You will, well, there, you'll see all the other quilts that other members uh, decided to make their materials with. Okay. Completely different. Oh, okay. Everything is, mm -hmm. I mean, the variety, the um, inspiration, the creativity is just really fascinating. Yeah. And you'll also see a lot of different items that are made out of fabric that are odd shaped quilts mm -hmm. and um, just the different styles that people mm. are using. It's really a All right. great well, show. I'm just getting so wrapped up in this, but we have to move <laughs> right. on. So let's talk about the big thing coming mm -hmm. up on September 15th. Yeah, it is our um, 22nd year. So we mm. have our show coming up. Uh, it's at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts and mm -hmm. the Performance Center. There are over a hundred quilts there, um, all hanging from the ceiling. So it's just the display alone is fabulous. Yeah. It's kind of ethereal, in my opinion. And um, then we'll have a few vendors there, um, a sewing machine, 
repair person. Okay. And then uh, Jean mentioned one of our members is having a project for yes. all ages related to quilts. We're also going to have a community arts project, mm -hmm. which uh, we envision um, having the public create, help us create a quilt. And really? we're not, we're going to see what we get and how much participation there is and that will kind of lead what how big the project will be okay. I hope that it will be a quilt that we can donate to a local charity mm -hmm. um, but and then we ha also have a uh, handmade boutique items um, for sale and a uh, whole uh, two or three tables with raffle baskets in mm -hmm. addition to the raffle quilt that we have we have raffle baskets mm -hmm. where very generous um, businesses and individuals have donated right. items to help us raise money for our guild and for our charitable mm -hmm. activities. Um, and the theme of our show this year is Common Threads. We had asked the guild members uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, we had thrown out some ideas and uh, I wanted to get something around the um, how to kind of repair the divisions that have come up in this country. Yeah. And so um, how, how can we show more acceptance, more respect um, as our country is changing, as our town is growing, mm -hmm. is becoming a bit more diverse? Um, how can we talk about this at our quilt show? Mm -hmm. And so the members voted on a theme common threads yeah and so um, we're hoping that some of the descriptions of the quilts that are going to be on display will talk about well what did that particular quilter right. find uh, in the meaning common threads for that quilt mm -hmm. and hopefully it will generate a conversation among the community who comes sure now you said that started that planning started about a year and a half ago does that mean you've already started planning for next year's show no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, are the, are, is, it, is it just an artistic show or are quilts for sale? Well, thank you for asking. Um, there are some quilts for sale in the, in the show, but in addition, this year, the HCA asked us to do a juried quilt show um, for the month of September, and that will be in the lobby. So there are quilts, and all of those quilts are for sale. So they're we'll not part of the quilt quilts. show, mm -hmm. but um, they will be, they'll be on display for the entire month of September. September 4th through the 30th. And all, so all of those quilts are for sale and the, part of the proceeds go to the Center for the Arts. And then in the show itself, um, I would say most are not for sale, but there probably are a dozen mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. people have put a price on that they'd be willing to sell. Okay. Now, I believe you were instrumental in this becoming a 501c nonprofit? Yes. Why did you, why did you do that? Um, that's a good question. I think it was to um, be able to, um, you know, when people are donating money, to be able to uh, have a bit more legitimacy and mm -hmm. show that, um, one, their donation is tax deductible now, but also to just lend um, more um, credibility mm -hmm. with the state and the country mm -hmm. um, in terms of tax mm -hmm. purposes and liability purposes. Right. Now, do all your proceeds go to your organization to support your activities? Because you mentioned some of these proceeds are going to the HCA. Well, that's from the juried show, so that's yep. true for any juried show that they have in the gallery. A portion goes to the Center for the Arts. Okay. Um, but thanks to Kathleen uh, incorporating us into a 501c3, we were able to apply for two grants. So we're very grateful to Middlesex Savings Bank for sponsoring the show, as well as the Cultural Council in Hopkinton mm -hmm. for sponsoring the show. And so, you know, being a 501c3 makes it easier for us to apply for those things. Um, so generally, yes, the proceeds all go to programming and, um, you know, paying the rent to the church and whatnot but in addition we do do charitable projects so we will sometimes buy fabric or make donations um, so we've supported a tremendous number of mm -hmm. charities in the um, in the greater metro west region over mm. the years yeah wow that's really that's like such a cool thing <laughs> all right and that oh actually i do have a little bit of time so I do I, I can get to this question 
Do you have any other activities during the year for the public other than the quilt show, or is this the big thing that you do? This is the big thing. Okay. And then every, all your other activities are for the guild members. Yes, but everybody is welcome to come. You mm -hmm. can try a couple meetings, and the, the dues are $25. It's not onerous. So mm -hmm. um, we really, you know, we welcome new people. You, we do have a member who's probably been in the guild for about 15 years, and I don't think she's ever made a quilt. <laughs> Maybe she's made one. So we're, the, it's, it's very low key. Okay. Yep. Right, I'm going to ask you both the same question as we wrap up, okay? What's your favorite quilt that you've ever made? Oh, gosh. Hmm. It's like asking me to pick between my children. Is that right? <laughs> it's like that personal. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the, mo the favorite quilt I've ever made, I made a quilt out of my children's baby clothes that is on mm. my bed. Okay. Um, it's a king size bed. There's four yeah. girls, there's a lot of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. How about you, Kathleen? Um, I haven't made that many quilts okay. in the last nine years. I'm very slow, but okay. I think that the one that's probably the most uh, special to me is uh, one that I started the first year that I joined that Jean, when she must have been on program, she, she does everything in the quilt guild, but yeah. she had a quilt block of the month. And uh, <laughs> you're the only one that finished it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> and it probably took me, you know, seven years to do it. And Excellent. I had to add a few more blocks, but it is done. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, thank you both for being on the show. It's a, it's a really cool passion that you have. Thank, thank you. you very much. And thank you for joining us and hearing about the Marathon Quilters Guild. For more information about them and their mission, check out their website. More info concerning All About Hopkinton, you'll find us on hcam.tv. If you or someone you know is having an impact on our community, we'd like to hear about it. Send us an email to jim at hcam.tv and perhaps you'll find them sharing their story right here on All About Hopkinton. Sitting in for Mary Arnott, I'm Jim Cousins and thanks for watching. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.